Hello everyone and happy Tuesday and welcome to your Tuesday edition of the Entertainment Report right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Let's get started right now with your Entertainment Report. First up, Olivia Newton-John dead at 73. Let's take a listen to that video from Entertainment Tonight. Last call for passenger Carlson. If you're racing to make your connection, one of our gate agent distractors is ready to help. I had a lot of fears about things and about dying, and I think everyone has that, but I, I'm, I'm over that now. I mean, I've confronted the worst thing that can happen. I'm a pretty positive person, generally, um, although breast cancer is a, a scary thing to go through. I felt that in, in my deepest core and in my soul, I knew that I would get through it. Once you're so close to the possibility of dying, everything gets put in the right perspective. And I feel grateful every day that I'm here. Olivia was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1992. She underwent chemo and radiation and lived cancer-free for a while, but the disease would return more than two decades later, this time in her lower back. Choosing a more holistic approach, she treated the effects of cancer with medical marijuana. I'm very, very lucky that I have a wonderful husband who grows medicinal cannabis for me that's been helping me with pain. In fact, I don't even know if I have pain because I take it on a regular basis and I feel very good and I think it's doing much more for me than just the pain. <laughs> one of Olivia's lasting legacies is Greece. She was actually 29 years old and one of the world's most popular singers with nine number one singles before being cast as high school senior Sandy, who was hopelessly devoted to John Travolta's Danny. John had to convince the studio to cast Olivia. They had brought up Linda Ronstadt, they brought up Mary Osmond, and I said, it, 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 they're wonderful. I said, but every every guy in the world wants Olivia and John as their, <laughs> their girlfriend. But after that, Olivia told us she almost turned the part down. I wanted to do a screen test to see if I thought I could do it. I was worried about two things. One, that I could pull off the role, and two, that I'd pull off 18 or 17 because I was 29. And John was a few years younger than me, so I said, no. Tell me about it, Stan. For the movie's final scene, where Sandy undergoes a transformation... Went out on the set, um, and nobody knew who I was, and I was getting all these looks and whistles, and I was thinking, what have I been doing wrong all these months? And it was really... Uh, very fun. It was really fun that I could pull it off. And those skin-tight pants? I was stitched into them because the zip or the thing on the side was broken. It was re they were really old. I think they were actually from the 50s. So even in the 70s, they were old. Needless to say, I didn't drink or eat much <laughs> on those days when we were filming. Those pants were later auctioned off in 2019 to benefit Olivia's Cancer Center in Australia. The billionaire founder of Spanx bought them for more than $160,000. Of course, Olivia's career extends far beyond Greece. She started as a singer and won four Grammy Awards. Singing just kind of happened for me. I used to do it for fun, and somebody heard me singing in a coffee lounge. I went into a talent contest and won it, and it kind of... You know, spiraled from there. In 1981, she recorded her most controversial song, which wasn't played on some radio and TV stations for being too sexual. Let's see. Physical, physical. You were banned for this song. And this song is like a lullaby compared to what we hear on the radio today. It's nothing. The things that are out there now, the things they talk about and say, are like, freak me out. So, yeah, it is like a lullaby. <laughs> Olivia leaves behind her husband John and daughter Chloe, who did a duet dance single with her mom. <laughs> Olivia stood by her only child when they came to ET in 2007 to reveal Chloe had overcome a battle with anorexia. I think she's amazing. And the fact that she wanted to come out and talk about it rather than be talked about and mm -hmm. say that, you know, I'm, I've gone through this, and that's a difficult thing to admit. And, and I just. Um, 
whole lot of admiration for her. Only since I've gotten older, I've been able to really stand back and, and I used to be like, oh, she's just mom, but now I, I look at her and what she's gone through, what an incredible human being she is. Um, her, how genuine she is. My mom, like, blows me away. I'm grateful for every day and the other choice is not so great. So I need to appreciate moments because those moments are, are what make life special and um, I feel very lucky. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And our thoughts and family go to Olivia Newton-John. Family and friends. That's where our thought and prayers go. Inside, Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson break up. Let's take a listen to that video from Entertainment Tonight. Surprises are great for parties, but for your work's digital security. Pete, no more. In case you missed it, Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson are going their separate ways. And now, E.T.'s got inside details about the split. Who are you texting, Kim? Does his name rhyme with Pete? <laughs> a relationship in the phone was a major factor here. A source of blaming the breakup on Kim and Pete's busy schedules. For the former SNL star, this means his stand-up career, as well as a jam-packed schedule of movie making. It's zucchini bread. Yum. He's currently in Australia for a project and, well, apparently, distance didn't make the heart grow fonder. Quote, Pete being away for so long was hard for them. Our source says, in short, the spark between Kim and Pete faded, and she didn't feel ready for something serious with him. <laughs> Kim and Pete were together for a total of nine months. The pair's romance kicked off with a kiss last fall when Kim hosted Saturday Night Live. Now, are you going to kiss me or not? I sure am, Jasmine. The romance played out across social media, as well as some quick mentions on the Kardashians. Pete is has got to be literally the best human being I've ever met. Like, the best heart. People always say, like, oh, he's so funny, and it's like, has to do with how funny he is. That's, like, fourth on my list of why I like him. Following the split, we can at least expect these two to be friendly exes. E.T. source notes, Kim still adores Pete and will always be friends with him. He is just super genuine, and it's just really fun to just hang out and do nothing and watch TV and just do nothing. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. She still thinks he's the nicest and sweetest guy in the world, and there's no drama or anything weird between them now. As fans know, Kim's love life was at a crossroads when this romance began. I do recognize the impact that my relationship has had on my family, and I've never had the opportunity to just say, I'm sorry, guys. The reality star was, and still is, in the middle of divorcing rapper Kanye West, who infamously dropped a diss track about his ex's new relationship. God sent me from that crash Just so I could beat Pete Davidson's ass oh. Our source points out Kim thought Pete was good for her at the time Because she felt Pete was the opposite of Kanye But what Kim thought was going to be a fun fling Turned into something more And E.T. source explains Quote, Kim wasn't feeling like she was willing to settle down with him just yet And we know Pete's looking to start his own family Sooner rather than later my favorite thing ever, which I've yet to achieve, is I want to have a kid. Uh, wow. It's like my dream. Wow. That's kind of what I'm just preparing for now, is trying to be, like, as good as a dude and develop and get better. So when that happens, it's just easier. Okay, but what about the Kardashians of it all? Season 2 premieres this fall and is expected to show more of their time as a couple. Babe? Yeah? Do you want to shower with me really quick? Shower with me? I love that he's kind yeah. and really, really thoughtful. Mm. He's the most thoughtful person. But we'll likely have to wait for season three to see what cameras captured when it comes to this split. As for the future of Kim's love life, her plans are pretty straightforward, with our source explaining she's ready to be single and date again. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the entertainment report right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Have a great day, everyone, and goodbye.